This is the final chapter for this week's lecture, Chapter 54, Breast Disorder. Please look over these objectives. Make sure that you can answer each one as this is the material you'll be tested on. Fibrocystic breast disease is abnormal development of breast tissue, mammary dysplasia. It's benign and primarily affects women 30 to 50 years of age. It can be caused or aggravated by hormonal changes of the menstrual cycle, specifically estrogen, caffeine intake, and nicotine. This is a picture of normal breast tissue and then breast tissue with multiple cysts. Single or multiple cysts appear in both breasts. They usually resolve with menopause and they have no relation to breast cancer. What you will see is tenderness and pain, also called nostalgia, especially prior to and during menses. Breasts feel hard, lumpy, and they have dense air. It is diagnosed by physical exam, movable, soft to firm masses, by mammography or ultrasound. Cytology, at fluid is aspirated and sent for analysis or an incisional biop biopsy. <clears throat> if there's questionable results, then the client will receive a mammogram and ultrasound. The medical management is dietary changes, decreased fat and caffeine, analgesics for mild pain, oral contraceptives for severe pain and symptoms, synthetic androgens to help suppress the FSH and LH, progesterone to suppress estrogenic effects. Surgery may be done to remove the cyst or a partial mastectomy or a removal of a portion of the breast axillary lymph nodes, pectoris, pectoralis major and minor muscles. This is only done if the disease is widespread and causes severe discomfort. Nursing management. We need a detailed history about the signs and symptoms. You can look in chapter 10 of assessment made incre incredibly easy pocket guide for more information. We will teach breast self-exam, that the client must have a breast exam every six months and PRN. They need mammography. They need to avoid smoking, caffeine, and chocolate. Medications, to wear a support bra even at night, and comfort measures such as cool compresses. You can see the difference in the two breasts in this picture. And this is pathology. You can see the cyst or a blue dome cyst because of the blue hue to it. Fibroadenoma is a benign breast mass. It is composed of connective tissue and glandular tissue. It's common in late adolescence and early adulthood, the 20s and 30s, occasionally in older women. The cause is unknown, but it may be hormonal because it grows in pregnancy and shrinks in menopause. It is a single solid nodule. It's firm with a smooth appearance and a defined shape. It is non-cancerous. There's no change in size with menses. It grows very slowly in non-pregnant women until it gradually reaches a fixed size. Your symptoms are painless, non-tender lump in the breast. It's encapsulated, it's contained, it's mobile. It's firm, feels sort of rubbery. If it's very large, the breast may appear asymmetric. It's diagnosed through a clinical breast exam, ultrasound, mammography, and there's usually a biopsy done if there's a family history of breast cancer or if there's any changes noted in it. Management is just to monitor it, possibly excise it. Nursing provides emotional support and teaching on 
self-breast exam, mammography, and post-op care. This is a fibroadenoma. Just some more pictures of fib fibroadenomas. You can see how smooth they are. Now, breast cancer. It's a mass of abnormal cells in the breast or breast. Risk incre increases with age. One in eight women will develop breast cancer. It's the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in women in the United States. One in four cancer diagnoses in women is for breast cancer. The five-year survival rate for small lesions is 80% if detected and treated early. It can develop in situ before becoming palpable. There's estimated cases, new cases and deaths from breast cancer from 2009. New cases, 192,370 invasive breast cancers in females. 62,280 new cases of non-invasive or in situ in females, and 1,990 cases in males. Deaths, 40,140 in females, 450 in males. As of 2008, there were about 2.5 million women in the United States who have survived breast cancer. So what are some of the risk factors for the development of breast cancer? Female greater than 50 years of age, family history of breast cancer, the BRAC1 and BRAC2 gene carriers, exposure to ionizing radiation as a child, previous history of breast cancer, history of colon or endometrial cancer, chronic alcoholism, early menarche, late menopause, obesity, nulliparity, having the first child after age 30, white ethnicity, but it is more lethal in African Americans. There are other different types of breast cancer. There's ductal carcinoma. That is the most common. About 80% of the cases are ductal carcinoma. There's lobular carcinoma. That's about 10% of the cases. Other types are medullary carcinoma or medullary carcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, tubular ductal carcinoma, and inflammatory breast cancer. That is the rarest, but it's also the most aggressive form of breast cancer. Again, review your anatomy of the breast. Common sites of breast cancer and in what quadrant they occur. This is a little bit older slide. It is now in the left upper quadrant, 45%. It's still 15 in the upper right quadrant, 18% in the nipple. The left lower quadrant is 10%, and the right lower quadrant is 5%. This shows an ultrasound or a mammography of ductal carcinoma, and it shows the progression that the cancer goes through. This is lobular carcinoma. Again, it shows what it looks like on a mammogram and the difference between a normal lobule and lobule with a carcinoma in situ. <coughs> Inflammatory breast cancer, again, is the rarest but most aggressive. What you'll see is the breast becomes reddened, swollen, and warm. The nipple becomes inverted, and there's a pew de orange appearance to the skin. This shows a progression here on the left of the initial, a month later, three months later, and four months later. You can see how quickly it is spreading. So 
Some breast cancer is hormone dependent. The growth of the tumor is enhanced by estrogen or progesterone. That's why we worry about hormone replacement therapy. Any breast cancer can spread. It goes to the axillary lymph nodes first. It can then travel on to the lung or the brain. Signs and symptoms are a painless mass or lump. It can be either fixed or mobile. There may be bloody discharge from the nipple, dimpling of the skin over the lesion, a retraction of the nipple, unequal breast sizes, an orange peel appearance to the skin, that's the PUD orange, and large lymph nodes. This shows lump, skin dimpling, the change in texture, change in the nipple, and discharge. <coughs> Some more signs and symptoms that you can visualize. Now, a breast cancer diagnosis is made with a mammogram. American Cancer Society recommends annual mammograms starting at age 40. Mammogram can detect a tumor prior to being able to palpate it. There is also MRIs, ultrasounds, and a biopsy with microscopic examination. Management can be surgery, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, radiation, immunotherapy, and vaccine clinical trials are in progress. It really depends on the stage and type of tumor. Please review the staging. The stages of breast cancer, stage zero, tumor confined to the milk duct or the lobal, lobal. Stage one, tumor is less than two centimeters and confined to the breast. Stage 2A, tumor is less than five centimeters or smaller with one, two, or three axillary node involvement. 2B, the tumor has now grown greater than five centimeters and there's up to three lymph nodes involved. 3A, tumor is greater than 5 centimeters and confined to 4 to 10 lymph nodes. 3B, doesn't matter what size the tumor is and it's spread to the chest wall or the skin. 3C, any size tumor with involvement of 10 or more lymph nodes and no distant metastases. And then stage 4, tumor involves lymph nodes and there is metastases. This shows you the uh, sizing of tumors. When we say that a tumor must be five centimeters or larger, that's about the size of a lime. So that's a pretty large tumor. If it's treated with surgery, it's performed immediately after results are obtained. They do the least mutilating procedure possible to still control the cancer. They will include sentinel lobe mapping. The sentinel lobe is the first lymph node that would, the cancer would spread to. They in, inject dye in and around the tumor and follow the dye to the lymph nodes that may be involved and contain cancer cells. This is a depiction of how that would look. <coughs> These are just some more pictures. They may perform a lumpectomy, which is a removal of the tumor. They may also remove some axillary lymph nodes for testing. A partial or segmental mastectomy is a removal of the tumor, some breast tissue, and some axillary lymph nodes. A simple or total mastectomy is all breast tissue is removed, but no removal of lymph nodes. Subcutaneous mastectomy, the breast tissue is removed, but the skin and the nipple is left intact. Modified radical mastectomy is breast, some lymph nodes, 
the lining over the chest muscles are all removed. The pectoralis minor muscle is also removed. In a ratified mastectomy, breast, axillary lymph nodes, pectoralis major and minor muscles are removed. Sternal lymph nodes are sometimes removed. Lymphedema is a swelling of soft tissue related to the buildup of lymphatic fluid. It occurs after surgery and or radiation of the axillary lymph nodes. Temporary or permanent enlargement of the arm and hand on the side of the amputated breast. It causes disfigurement, decreased range of motion, skin changes, can lead to infection, necrosis, and require amputation of the limb. That's why we don't do blood pressures or do sticks on the affected side. To treat lymphedema, we keep the arm elevated above the waist and do not go above the shoulder level post-op. Light exercises are performed to contract the muscles and move the lymphedema out of the affected limb. These exercises will be instructed per physical therapy and the physician. They collaborate on these exercises. Compression garments or wrapping the affected limb like in an ACE wrap will encourage fluid away from the affected limb. And then gentle massage. This is a picture of lymphedema, and on the right is a commercial compression garment. Drug therapy. If it's an estrogen-dependent tumor, aromatase inhibitors, aramidex, aromastin, famara. You don't have to know these drugs. Postmenopausal women with estrogen-dependent tumors, tamoxifen. Now that is a very popular drug. Progesterone-dependent tumors use mifepristone or RU486. Chemotherapy is used to destroy the cancer cells that are not caught by surgery. They have what they call a breast cancer chemotherapy cocktail. It consists of adromycin, cytoxin, and taxotere. A nurse must be specially trained and certified in order to administer chemotherapy, as it is a very dangerous administration. Radiation can be done before or after surgery and it will be ordered if the tumor is greater than five centimeters, if there's chest wall involvement, or usually greater than four lymph nodes involved. The side effects of radiation are fatigue, radiation burns, rash, minor pain, and discomfort. <coughs> Immunotherapy and cancer vaccine. Herceptin, the, brand, uh, the trade name of a drug that's on the market. Well, it's not on the market. It's still in testing. It's for HERS2 positive cancer. HERS2 is a genetic protein. It's a monoclonal antibody that attaches to the HERS2 positive receptors in the breast. It slows the growth of the cancerous cells and therefore the metastases of the cancer. It is given IV. There's Nuvax. It's a HER2 peptide. It's currently in the third phase of clinical trial. It has been shown to reduce mortality by 50%. Other vaccines and clinical trials are being targeted at immuno responses. What are some patient teaching points? Breast self-exam. Regular exams with their primary care provider. Note any breast changes and see the primary care provider immediately. <coughs> Pre- and post-op teaching. We're going to be teaching wound care and drain care, signs and symptoms of infection, to expect to use home health nursing. We're going to be examining the support system at home, encouraging that they keep all their follow-up exams. 
how to administer their medications, no heavy lifting greater than 15 pounds, and not to sleep on that affected side because it has impaired circulation and lymphedema can occur. We're going to teach them the signs and symptoms of lymphedema to avoid a lot of repeti repetitive motions and avoid injury to that affected arm. The use of an electric razor for axillary hair. To wear gloves when working outside in the yard or doing housework. We want to prevent infection at all costs. Preventing injuries to that affected side. No blood pressure or needle sticks to the affected side. They will post off have a JP drain. They will have a special support bra that they'll have to wear and all of this will be included in our teaching. If there's metastases, that's the migration of cancer cells from one part of the body to another. It could metastasize to the lymph nodes, skeletal structure, pulmonary, brain, liver. What the client sees is pain in a new site or a pathological fracture if the skeleton is involved. It is diagnosed by X-ray, MRI, or CT. There's a lymph node dissection done at the time of the breast surgery or maybe even later to see if it's in the lymph nodes. Treatment is palliative care. It's symptom relief without an attempt to cure once it metastasizes. Hospice care. Sometimes there's surgery that can help relieve symptoms. For prevention, our available options are long-term follow-up care, and annual mammogram and clinical breast exam, and a monthly breast self-exam. A bilateral prophylactic mastectomy. It is invasive. Both breasts are removed, but it reduces the risk for cancer, but it doesn't totally eliminate it. Many women that are carrying the BRAC1 or BRAC2 gene have opted for the prophylactic bilateral mastectomy to help reduce their risk of breast cancer. Chemo prevention with tamoxifen. Taking tamoxifen can reduce your chances of getting breast cancer by 49%, but there are many risks versus the benefits. You can find those on page 1062 in your book. As I said earlier, there's an experimental breast cancer vaccine that is currently in clinical trials. They can also do breast reconstruction after a mastectomy to give the appearance of a regular breast. And there's artificial implants. They can, the implant is placed between the tissue and the chest wall. It is expanded through saline injections into the implant over several months to slowly expand it till it's the same size as the other breast. This is an artificial implant and how they inject the saline. They can also use auto, autogenous tissue. The surgeon harvests tissue from the abdomen, usually the rectus abdominis muscles, muscle, along with the tissue and the fat. It creates a breast with a much more natural look and feel, but it can leave a physical deformity where the tissue was removed. This is how they do it. This is they take the rectus abdominal muscle and they do a large incision and put it back into the breast area. 